Carol here. Warm welcome to my craft room. I know I've been away and I'm fluttering back <laughs> because I had the most difficult week that anybody that makes tutorials and puts them out on YouTube will totally understand and I will explain it to you. So once again I'm going to try with this uh, edit voiceover and yeah, there you go. Look at that. I'm getting an email. This is what I'm saying. I've stopped and started this at least nine times. Uh, but I'm going to let that go because we all get emails, right? Yeah, there we go. And um, so it's a five by seven card. That's what it works out to be. It was going to be an A2 size card. <laughs> But we all know it's not going to end up in a two-size card, so I don't commit myself to it right from the start. Yes, so I took out the the little guy there, and yeah, I'm cutting it down because it just doesn't fit. And then I'm thinking, this is fantastic. I'm going to get an a two-size card because I had to cut it down. Uh, excuse me, this is my baby powder. Thank you very much. Yeah, so I take that baby powder out of my little container. Then I take my dollar store where nothing's a dollar blush brush. I put it over my garbage pail and flick off the excess and bring it back to my, um, oh, this thingy. See what I'm telling you? Talk about mind blocks. That's all I was getting. And that just did, that, that's just a little thing. Uh, in comparison to how the week went and I will explain it because that's if you if I don't come on YouTube it's because I've either I'm not well or this I struggle for days that's what I did with this trying to get one tutorial up so uh, yeah I feel totally blessed that all of a sudden I'm two minutes into the tutorial and nothing major has happened <laughs> so let's move on I used the watermark ink from Little Darling Rubber Stamps. I love it. It's so juicy. And I'm using the uh, clear embossing powder, excuse me, the white embossing powder by Little Darling Rubber Stamps because I love its bright white. And uh, yeah, I'm just flicking off the ex excess. Yes. And this is something because you don't want to be too careful when you're doing an edit because then you make more mistakes than not. Just go with the flow, Carol. Just go with the flow because you've you've done this uh, at least 143 times now. So I took my heat tool, as we all know. Nothing is, uh, you know, if if you watch if you're watching this video, you pretty well know this is a heat tool, and I'm heating up the white embossing powder. And I'm thinking I'm going to do uh, an embedded emboss. I have a couple of tutorials up, but they're my older tutorials when I didn't edit. I didn't know what I was doing. I get more comments that I should have done this, should have done that. I, I, I wish I did, but I didn't have the equipment. I didn't have the knowledge, first of all, on how to do anything but create. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know if I know much more, but <laughs> yes. So, um, here, I'm just, I put this in the edit because I'm going to do, I think, four more cards with the same stamp. If I'm going to have it in the platform, I want to stamp it on other cardstock, right? This is my 140 pound cardstock, by the way. So I took out my LDRS clear embossing powder and the beautiful watermark. It's like a Versamark, but it's watermark. That's what they call it. And I'm addicted to it because it's so yummy juicy and it has a nice large lifted up uh, pad on it, you know, so you don't have to press down so much. So then I did it in clear. I did it in white on white and then I embossed it in gold. Yes. And look at my magnets. This is the frustration. Why wouldn't I put it in one of the two other ones I have or the Tim Holtz platform? I mean... You know, when your mind is set on putting it in something like this little mini, I looked at the stamp and I thought, oh, that'll fit in this little mini st stamp platform. Uh, Sweet Petunia. Is, is that, you know, I haven't used it for a while. I know that's who makes it. And uh, Misty. There. See, my brain is working. It's 7.30 in the morning and uh, or 7.15. 
So I have to get the fog out of my brain and uh, then we'll move along. So I wanted to show you that I am going to put up these other um, cards, which are going to be hopefully A2 size cards just with a sentiment and uh, we'll see, we'll see. But I wanted to show you how beautiful they looked on here with some gold embossing powder, some white for watercoloring, and uh, some clear for, I was going to use the uh, color burst. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so while uh, I'm lifting my mat that I bought for over top of my Tim Holtz mat, that takes the glare out of my 114 lights and uh, my camcorder looking down as you can see it there. Yes, even though I bought professional lights, it must be an insecurity I have. I actually put other lights around it. <laughs> Something about feeling squished in when you're creating, right? You have all your stuff, you know, I have a big island I create from and it's packed. So my kitties, they, they want to watch what's going on because, yeah, I'm using my photopolymer. Is it photopolymer? Uh, polyphotopolymer. <laughs> Let's just keep that in there. It's my polychromo. Such big words. <laughs> At 7.15 in the morning, they're too big of words for me to think about. <laughs> so let's begin. We're going to first start out using the technique uh, black cardstock and putting your first layer down with white. Whether you use your polychromos, your uh, whatever pencil crayons you have, it'll look great. Oh, look at that. My title. Just a minute. I have to change that. This is the pencil sharpener I absolutely love. It's called a boss stitch and I get it at my stationery store. Yeah, that stationery store has been pretty good to me. It's only five minutes from my house and I love dropping by there because they take care of stationary needs but a lot of those needs they fit into my crafter so yes this is the black 110 pound cardstock that's super thick it is probably thicker than my 140 pound white cardstock and I get it at Michael's and here we go I'm sharpening I'm going to sharpen 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 because you know if you watch my coloring that's what I do. I love a sharp point on it for a lot of reasons, but um, I can't think of them right now because I'm having a chocolate chip cookie. It's about 7.30 in the morning now. Yeah, I made 10 dozen and some brownies the other night because I felt guilty. You know when you do a lot of crafting and the hubby's just kind of left out for a while, I thought, oh, I gotta be Molly Homemaker and get down there and make them 10 dozen chocolate chip cookies and some brownies. So that's what I did. So I just walked down stairs and, gra stairs and grabbed a brown uh, chocolate chip cookie. I don't even eat cookies. I don't eat cookies at all. Anybody that knows me, I don't eat desserts. I just, I, I don't, I don't know why. I don't like it. Uh, it's too sweet. But you drink Coca-Cola, Carol. I know. <laughs> I have one right now. <laughs> Ice cold. Yes, I put it in the freezer at about quarter to seven this morning. Get it ready for my tutorial. Yeah, so I'm having a chocolate chip cookie. Here's the three pencils I'm using. Grab any pencils, a light and a dark. Yes, your white and a light and a dark of your pencils, your or polychromos or Prisma, whatever you're using. And I love this flicking technique. The reason I love it is I use it so much on with Copic coloring that it was just a natural flow over for me to do it. Uh, when I pencil crayon. I make my own sun kiss marks. I draw a circle around it so you don't forget. If you, you know, if you forget, just go back and um, you can make it a spot in there by going over it with the white. So here, I just want to share something with you. I, I complete it up to this point on each flower, okay? I'll grab different colors as you see. I grabbed a piece of paper so that I don't get any of the oils off my hands onto the black card stock because you will see it when you're, when you're coloring. And I love using the white as an undertone because you know I always do that with anything. Whether it's white or any color, I always put a lot of colors down. And the tips generally are white if the flower's curled under. 
if you want to make the flower curl under, put the white tone towards the end of your petal. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't know if it's better that I do my tutorials not this early because I need to explain things. And uh, yeah, I'm, I am a morning person now. Yes, I'm going to be 64 on Saturday. And my mom always told me, Carol, when you hit 50, you're going to enjoy your mornings. You really will. You might not like them, you know, uh, when you're working and things because, you know, you're forced to get up and go to work. But once you retire and once you start to settle in, you will enjoy getting up early. And my mom was right again. I enjoy getting up. And I hope everybody had a wonderful Mother's Day, by the way. I didn't put it on my blog until later because Mother's Day, even though my mom's been in heaven now for close to June 4th will be five years, I still have a difficult time with Mother's Day. So, uh, but that doesn't excuse me for not wishing you a happy Mother's Day. So I'm sorry I didn't put that on my blog until later. <clears throat> excuse me. I don't want to get all worked up here. So I'm going to keep going on with the tutorial. Here I'll do the tips of my coloring this flower in with this beautiful, uh, I don't know, this purple, this violet. It's gorgeous. And you can see I change everything up. I work with it all the time. I'll be doing one flower, I'll move over to the other flower. I'll be doing a color on one flower and I'll go, I'm going to put a bit of that in that flower. There is no science to coloring. Coloring is to relax. I put that in before, but I didn't say anything because I was yakking. And uh, I like the tip, I like doing this, um, the tips dark on a bigger flower and the flicking. You have veins in flowers, right? Uh, we have veins. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that just came up, but you know, some people, some people say they had like they have veins where they don't want veins. I haven't experienced that yet, but <laughs> I'm sure I will. 64 in, uh, let's see, two days. Yowzer better than being 65 you know I'm 64 not 65 so anyway yeah so let's move on it must be bothering me because I keep saying it right yeah so the sun kiss marks the beauty of putting white as your first layer they're already there right and I didn't know where to when to speed this up when not to speed it up because I you know if I color I take my time it could be months I could be here for days Excuse me. And um, yeah, I, I have to tell you while we're doing this, because I'm doing the same routine on all of it. Uh, if you notice, my colors are not like Copics. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, like Copics, you, well, these aren't like Copics when you do pencil crayon art, whatever you want to call this coloring. Um, you don't, you're not dealing with the number system. All you're doing is dealing with what looks good to you, and that's what I do. I just start it. If it doesn't look good, I go over it. And uh, experimenting, experimenting, experimenting. And that's why, you know, I set out a good month to do a card like this. <laughs> Seems like it, doesn't it? Oh, yes. Uh, but I'm speeding it up, I think, just uh, uh, two times, actually. Uh, maybe four times, I don't know. I, I wanted to show you that if I start out doing the tips on the outside, I will continue to do the tips on the inside. Always remembering that down underneath those little teensy petals, it's dark. There's shade down there. You're not getting any sunlight. And so it looks opposite, right? It looks opposite because the tips should be light because the sun is hitting them. But that's the beauty of uh, changing it up. I will have underneath there darker than the tips. It's just going to take me some time. Now I'm working on leaves. Obviously, I got the greens out. I'm going to do all of them. Now, if you work with a pointed pencil, be very careful if you put white embossing powder down. It's very easy to knock it off with a pointed pencil. And you're going to have that white embossing, uh, you know, chip off. And then you... It just isn't going to look as pretty if you keep, um, you know, see that leaf there with all the little veins in it kind of in the center? You want to just go over the whole thing, like 
yeah, 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 and go over it, but you're going to risk taking off some of the embossing powder, and I didn't want to do that. And coloring, I think, is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things to do, to relax. And, uh, well, other than riding my Harley, that may be up there more on the top of the list, but coloring is in there. And, uh, yeah, and one of the flowers, I think it's this one, I wanted to do monochromatic, black and white. It looks beautiful. I don't know if there's a black and white flower. I don't even know what this flower is. It reminds me of a, a tightened up magnolia. <laughs> a cabbage. <laughs> yeah, a tightened cabbage. And uh, you can, I don't know what I was doing here, um, picking out pencils. Oh, I kept taking them out of the, it comes with three, uh, it's stacked up three times. I think it's 120 set. And you have to keep taking the stacks out if you want to use the colors underneath. It's a must. And uh, you'll see that I do hit some of that embossing powder. You can see it flicking off there. I just told you don't do that. But another thing I'll tell you not to do, because my children used to tell me I was good at that, <laughs> telling them what not to do, um, is when you're uh, flicking it off, don't use your hand. You're, you're going to risk uh, the oil off your hands, uh, smudging white smudges. Take your baby, your baby, take your blush brush, uh, just one from the dollar store. If you have a dollar store where something's a dollar, ours nothing is. And uh, yeah, just continue on. The flicking motion puts those veins in there that I love. Look at, I'm going back, just like I said. And I like to color in and color in and color in. Another thing I love to do, see the thick white pieces on the flowers that the artist put in there? When you emboss it, it's white. I like to color it in real gentle so you don't flick it off, but I like to color it so it's a lighter tone of whatever you're working with. So the yellow, I went over the thick uh, part with yellow and with the pink, it's pink, yada, yada all the same and the veins will only come like natural veins if you keep uh, that pencil pointy sharp and you release the flick that's what I call it you put your pencil down and you flick it and release it don't keep your pencil down so that the flick mark at the end you still have the pencil on the paper there's that embossing folder we're going to use when I get finished coloring I don't know how much, um, obviously I didn't look at my camcorder window so I could see that, look at Carol, you're, uh, you're honed in. But uh, anyway, you can get a gist of the flowers that are going to be around the outside of this embedded emboss. Uh, this technique has to be one of my favorite because you can't tell where this picture begins and where the embossing folder uh finished or it began either or and here I'm going down and I'm thinking to myself I think I'm going to color in all the white <laughs> yeah and uh, so I guess that's what I was doing and yeah it's beautiful isn't it I tell you what this with the white pencil and doing it monochromatic with deep navy oh wouldn't that be heavenly I'm just thinking of that as I'm watching it. I might have to do that. It's uh, And I love watching it when you speed it up because, wow, you know, that flower took me probably six hours and I just did it in six seconds. Oh, the beauty of computers, isn't it? And that's what I'm going to get. Okay, let's explain it while I'm coloring because it's all repetitious. You're, you're just going to see me color in a different fashion. Some I'll put the shade deep on the edges and leave the, uh, yeah, and look at, I'm using a, a green yellow with that, uh, that uh, red purpley color. Um, it's like a magenta. It's so pretty. Look at that. Experiment. That's what I tell you. But anyway, at Christmas time, I got the uh, Final Cut Pro X or Pro 10, whatever you call it. It has an X. So I don't know if they say the X of Roman numeral or they use the 10, but it's the Final Cut Pro. And I've been using just iMovie on my Mac because what you know, see how I colored the white with the purple? 
So you always like what you know, you don't like what you don't know. And here I want to make sure I get the, the flow of the leaf. If it's standing straight up, I want my uh, markings to be straight up and down. You don't want to curve something that isn't curved. You can see that's standing up. It's not curved down. So make your marks straight up and down. Yeah, move your paper. Have some fun with it. Don't get upset at it because your flower will look like a flower because all flowers are different. Darken up down into where you think the sun is not going to reach it. And that's the simple theory. Uh, and switch up your pencils. Like the purple, I went to navy to get all of those shade marks. But let's get back to my Final Cut Pro X. I've been watching videos on it. I've had it on my computer since Christmas. And why I fear, I fear change. There's something about me that I, you know, the only thing I, I, I like in change is my clothes. <laughs> and my nail polish. But I don't like change. Anyway... <laughs> Let's move on to the Final Cut Pro X. So, this week when everything was going askew, I I was trying to edit, things weren't going well. I thought, okay, this thing came up on my screen of my camcorder, and it's a new camcorder uh, that I also, um, my husband got me at Christmas, and I'm not familiar with it like I was my really uh, inexpensive can Canon camera. Um, and this thing does things, you know, um, I'm not used to. So I thought, oh, the white thing must mean I have to delete stuff off my SD card. But no, it's the yellow thing. <laughs> Changing from my camera to my camcorder. Yeah, that's change. See what I mean? It scares me. So I went in, I took my camcorder one evening, and I thought, okay. Now, let me just tell you, uh... Designing for little darting rubber stamps is just like a dream. It's wonderful. And I decided for the blog hop next week, I was going to be ready. I was going to have my projects ready. And then there, a friend of mine that has a business and a beautiful channel, uh, Cheeky Designs, asked me to do a layout for her in June, which is coming up. And I have not scrapbooked. I'm not a scrapbooker. Or I love layouts. I do layouts, but they're the ones you hang up and uh, like paintings, but they're 12 by 12. But actual like, uh, yeah, see how you can see that little dots coming up because I'm hitting the embossing powder. So anywho, I thought I would be ready. This has nothing to do with Final Cut Pro, but it does. It'll intertwine. You know, my stories always intertwine. So um, I went in and I... I thought, you know what, I'm not going to do these, like take off the old videos from a month ago. I'm going to tick them off because I can see you can go tick, 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 and then, and then take them all off at one time. Well, I did that, tick, 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 and then it says two things. You delete, just delete, and then it says delete all. And I thought the delete all meant all the tick marks. <laughs> I was nearly out of my mind by the time this hit. So I put delete all and it did exactly what it said. See how you go right down in that rose with that darker, darker green? And yes, I'm doing a green rose to start with. As you can see, I go back to every flower. There, see I'm going. And then you, let me just say this. You, the closest flowers, you want to change the color up and then go over one and make it the same if that makes any sense. Every third flower should be in the same color range to make it pleasing to the eye. So anyway, I press delete all and I'm looking at it and I'm going, uh, excuse me, where's all my, where's everything on my uh, SD card? If that's what you call it. I couldn't believe it. I was traumatized. I've done this before with my camera, but I'm telling you, it's the feeling that comes over you is like if you've ever gone to the mall. I only did it one time, and my son it was my first child. When I, I was looking at it, was Kmart, and I don't even know if they have Kmart now. And they had the clothes in the round racks all over the floor. And I was looking at something, I turned my head for a second, and if he didn't want to hide and he hid, 
underneath where I was looking, all the clothes. So he was stuck under the clothes and he just sat there and he thought it was hysterical. I didn't find it funny. I went into panic mode. I was a lunatic in the mall screaming in this store, screaming. You know, his name, uh, close the doors. <laughs> just well, that's what I was doing when I didn't see any of my videos. <laughs> close the doors. What's going on in my life? Nothing is going right. They can't really be gone. I thought, no, they're not really gone. So I put it off. I turned it on. Blah, 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 blah. It was gone. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's the same feeling. And, and, and here, oh, I had security in a second. Yada, yada. And I was running all over the place. And here he just... He just went to somebody and he said, did you see my mummy? And then they took him over to, I guess, where they take children that uh, want to totally, uh, you know, put their parents into oblivion. And there he was sitting. And, you know, I couldn't even get upset at him because I was so happy to see him. So I'm like crying and excited but then, you know, that wore out and other things happened when we got to the vehicle. <laughs> oh, he knew he's never going to do that again. Yes, mommy didn't like that. And I'll leave it at that. So that's the feeling I had, this total despair. So not only did I lose, I, I lost my layout. Uh, I was doing layouts and, you know, I haven't done a layout. So I, that's a lot of work people and you have to have different things and different uh I had to go shopping and get different ephemera and I wrote down all of the words that uh layout bookie book bookie <laughs> scrapbookers use I so I can you know I want to sound like I know what I'm doing and so I wrote it all down in my iPad because <laughs> I've watched 9622 videos on layouts and I want to be well versed when that comes up. So, yeah, that should be a lot of fun. I I, I could become addicted to that. And this one, I, okay, this flower I wanted to look like licorice. Uh, tiger, tiger, uh, not licorice, tiger uh, ice cream. I don't eat ice cream either. The only ice cream I eat is um, Dairy Queen. The odd time we're biking and I'll stop and get a little Dairy Queen uh uh, peanut butter parfait little <laughs> it's 45 pounds just to hold it in your hand but they're delicious so here you go yeah I I've got yeah I've got my I'm cleaning up everything so that I can sweep my floor later I'm trying to find some new colors I think and no I'm all finished look at that that uh, speech so anyway I lost all of my footage and I the so I had to start this card over um, the edit and uh, yeah. And so I thought, okay, this is what I'm gonna do when I start over. I am going to go to Final Cut Pro X. Oh yeah, I'm putting uh, Stick It. I found this in my stash. It's not called Stick It, but it's the same uh, concept. They're sticky on both sides. So you, you en I end up putting this down because when you do an embossed embedded emboss you want to have stick you want to stick the back with double-sided tape whether it's tape uh, don't use liquid that will ooze out when you run your uh, embossing folder through obviously and you want to cut around your object you want to embed in your uh, project now uh, it's really nice to do this technique if you have the stamp and the folder reasonably comparable, right? So my flowers compared to the flowers that are on the outside of this embossing folder, which is beauteous. So when that gets pressed down into my, uh, I use my Big Shot Pro because it's bigger, or Big Shot Plus, whatever. And um, it's funny how crafting supplies are like clothing. You have your Big Shot, but then you have your Big Shot Plus. <laughs> yeah. It's when you graduate from, I, I, I don't know, size 12, and then you go to size 12 plus. I don't know how that works, but I'm sure I'll be there soon. <laughs>
And I'm not, you know, there, I, hey, we need stores for uh, larger sizes, of course. We're all not a Twiggies, hello. I'm not, uh, and so I'm really thankful for plus size uh, stores because I think I'll be visiting you soon. Stay there, don't close down. So anywho, see how it's important to line it up because you're going to, um, you're going to emboss some of those flowers into your flowers, right? So you want to set it so that it's comparable and that you take off the sticky off the back, no matter the double sided, uh, stick it. This isn't stick it. It's something else, but I mean, that works perfectly. I'm just grabbing a knife to grab this little piece off, bend it and pull it off. Now I put a marking where that was going to go because I played around inside my embossing folder. I did not want to lose the alignment. Then you're going to tape it to your black cardstock, run this through with a shim. Let me stress, shim it. Yes, do the shimmy shim because you want it to embed right down in your paper and preferably the same paper. I did that so you could stop it if you want to see what the numbers were. And look at that. You cannot find um, <clears throat> a line that shows you that it does not fully, um, it's all one. It doesn't have anything. It's so embedded down in there. I'm going to take some of it off because I don't want to make it, you know, a 14 by 14 inch card. I do want to make it a 5 by 7 and uh, but I didn't know that then I just knew I had to go around the flowers and I'm looking to see how beautiful this um, embedded emboss and I will try to link up a couple other tutorials have mercy on me because I didn't know how to edit or voice over or any of that with those older videos and I used to talk so softly I didn't have a mic I mean you know I am rather quiet uh, voiced person to begin with uh, but even when I scream I think it's not a loud 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 scream I don't know I'll have to practice that today we'll see and uh, <laughs> so here I measured out to make my base right you need to make your own card base I do 140 pound card stock uh, I just measure it out I add a half an inch to the bottom or a quarter of an inch, whatever you want for that to score it. I did not put a gusset in this one because nothing is going on the inside but a sentiment. So, um, yeah. And you know what? I don't even think I put anything inside this yet for this card. We'll have to see. This is Stampin' Up! paper in the Wisteria Wonder, I think it it's called. I haven't bought anything for years from uh, Stampin' Up! but I did buy this paper. It's so pretty. And then when you go into Michael's hanging up with the foils, you'll find this glitter paper. This glitter paper is so glittery, but there's no glitter on it, if that makes any sense. You can run your, your nails down it and no glitter is going to fall off. It's super lightweight. It has your own sticky on the back. It has the grid just like if you were going to Mac tack your drawers or whatever, uh, your kitchen drawers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Who wants to Mac tack your drawers? <laughs> okay, Carol. <clears throat> Excuse me. Your kitchen drawers. I have to stop the video and compose myself here. I don't know why I found that so funny. I have to get a drink of my Coca-Cola so I settle myself down. Just a second. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> now, what I like about this uh, glitter paper at Michael's, over where the foil is hanging up in the rolls, uh, it, because it's up high, I don't see anything that they hang up high. I, I never lift my face up past looking straight ahead. But for some reason, I must have. This is in gold and silver, and you will fall in love with it. Look how fine it is. It's beautiful. Now, I had to put that release paper back on. I don't know what I was thinking because I want this to go like that. Okay, so I'm going to have to put double-sided tape on the back of the black, 
which I did. I put that big honking six inch roll of um, double sided tape on the back there. I must have taken it out of the edit. But uh, no, I'm sorry. That's my uh, Walmart. Um, no, that's my six inch double sided roll. And because this was so long ago, I did this, uh, I had to redo this edit. I can't remember, but anyway, it's just that uh, six inch roll I, I showed you in a haul. And here, uh, yeah, so I put it on the silver, making this silver, that silver is so that the white can show up on all the areas you sun kissed your flowers. That silver will be beyond white because I'm going to have a white card base anyway. Then I put the Wisteria Wonder color, whatever paper you have that matches whatever color is prominent in your card base. And then I put it down on top of that color and then I'm going to use my foam strips to raise it up. I don't want to raise it up too much. I want this to be the focal point. Now, I was going to put, use this card as a sympathy card. I needed a sympathy card, so I got out praying for you, and I was going to put it on the front. But I thought, you know what? I, I made uh, some time ago, it's in the video, a sympathy card I really liked. And uh, so I ended up using that. But uh, So I left the sentiment off altogether. I didn't put anything on it, because I thought, you know what? This could be for anything. Friendship, happy birthday to you. You know, but it I, you couldn't see the black, okay? You couldn't see the black on there. So what I did, uh, the black emboss, excuse me, I got out my beautiful, beautiful, oh, I started doing that with that uh, first, it's like, it's called, uh, it's the Tim Holtz Medium, Ranger Medium. And I found this uh, foam brush at the dollar store where nothing's a dollar. It's fantastic. It has four refills for the end. It's chopped off on the end. And I'm using it just to cover. I don't want to scrape it over everything because I because I don't want my um, I don't want my perfect pearls. Yes, I had to stop the video just to think of what it was. But at your Dollar Tree, I think this is for your nails. Actually, I have one not open here. I bought a bunch of them because they have the three refills and the one already in there. It's called Lori Nail Polish Touch Up Pen, dollar fifty. What did I tell you? It has extra replacement tips, and it's uh, a little hard, yet a little spongy all at the same time. And that's what came to my mind. Oh, yeah. And it works perfect for getting those places that you don't want that uh, Versamark or Ranger ink, whatever, that you put on to hold down your powders. So I picked out all of the powders that I had that resembled the colors in the color trio, but we're going to... Once you flick it, you know, all off with your blush brush here, it's going to go all to the right areas where you put your Ranger ink. And then I'm going to go over with my mister and spray it and then bring it back. Yes, I sprayed a little bit to show you, but I didn't keep it in. That will set your uh, powders. S mist on top. You can use hairspray, but I don't like the stickiness of it. Just mist water and your powders will be set. Sorry about my head there, I'm getting situated. And so I misted the front of the Perfect Pearls. They're set, they're not gonna go anywhere. I really like the look of this, but I thought to myself, okay, what are you gonna do with this? I don't want the sentiment on there. And I and I thought, you know what? I want to use twine or and a ribbon. Yes, yeah, I need it. While I'm thinking, I need some of that nasty Coca-Cola. So um, I went to my stash and I got the most beautiful violet ribbon and the most beautiful vivid blue twine. It's not stretchy cord, it's actual twine to put on there. First I have to make the card base. So I go over to the half inch mark, I take my uh, stylus and because it's 140 pound paper, you really wanna dig in there. Then I'm going to bend it and uh, yeah, make my white border. So let's get back to Final Cut Pro X quickly. I put, I changed up. I took every, I started over with my camcorder. I had all of it redone on the camcorder. Re, I redid it 
and I thought I'm going to put it into, I've watched enough tutorials to know how to work it, kind of. And I wanted to use all these shortcuts. You know, A, A, L means this. A, M means move. Um, yada, yada, yada. I put it on a piece of paper and I was trying to memorize all the shortcuts. Oh, my. I couldn't find stuff. I was, it was going every which way and I thought, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can do it another day. I just can't do this today. So here what I'm doing is I'm just going to, um, yeah, I'm going to, I don't know if I'm bringing it in, I think, to show you. And uh, yeah, this mat, I wanted to do a video on this. I got it at my um, stationery store and I cut it into two different sizes. One to just put at the bottom so the glare doesn't show in the bottom. And then I can put my supplies on the top so you don't see the lights, although you do see one of my aunt lights standing there. My good professional lights are off to the side and a few other lights just because I had them and they felt lonely, so I put them up. I had the space, so I put them up. And you still get shadow. Look at that. I don't know. I need to have a professional light person show me how to do it, watch some tutorials. So anyway, when I went to play my uh, tutorial over on Final Cut Pro X, oh my, yes. It was, if it wasn't so funny, I would have had another breakdown after losing everything on my camcorder, but it was hysterical. So I thought, no, I'm not ready for this change. See what I mean? It's change. Oh, yes. So I went back and now I'm on the iMovie again, but I am going to learn it because I bought all these plugins to put into the Final Cut Pro X. I have to learn how to plug them in. I have no clue. I get so excited when I see stuff that's all these extras. Then I have to learn how to use it. So anyway, that was all happening last week, my friends. This was last week. This was like Mother's Day, um, you know, I had a wonderful Mother's Day, by the way. I just get this deep sadness missing my mom. But uh, I don't let it show. I carry on in the day. And uh, yeah. So anywho, I put a bunch of uh, uh, tape runner. Oh, this is another funny story. I don't use uh, runners, you know. The only runner I say I use is that uh, red one. I'll get it. It's that... Um, it's so super sticky, but it's expensive. It's $16 at our Michaels. You know, you have to use your coupon on it because there's no way for a runner I'm paying $16 plus tax. So it's like 20 bucks. So anyway, I had a bunch of them that I got at my stationery store. They even sell tape runner. Can you believe it? And uh, instead of you, that's what I used here. But I used it on my card fold. And if at the end of the tutorial, it, my card fell off and that was a cheap one that I had in my drawer that was on sale at Michael's and I'll never use it again I made sure that I put it in a bin to just do the projects like this if you want to tape something at the back and then make sure you put scotch tape over that and I made three lines with that cord it's this blue this oh can't even describe it and then I found this deep violet what are you doing, Carol? Get back here. Get your ribbon. I sit on a, a, a high chair. Like, I'm not in a high chair. Because if I was in a high chair, I'd be always eating food. <laughs> but, you know, I, I work from an island. Islands are up, you know, like the one in your kitchen. So I have to have, t I have two high chairs. One for if I have a friend, if I ever have a friend, and they come over to craft with me, they have a chair, and one for me. So now I will, I love this look where you pull it in to one of the corners, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, yeah, I distressed the edges because I didn't like it all uh, so perfectly straight, you know. The cord is not straight, it's cattywampus right in, you know, it's straight across, but it kind of zooms down and it's tucked with that beautiful, beautiful ribbon. Don't you love it? And I'm loving this card so far, but I had to cover the front of the bow because every time I tightened it, the knot didn't look nice. So I went to my stash and uh, Honey Bee Stamps, I'm putting it on the front of my card here. Honey Bee Stamps have these, um, they look like wet dro dew drops. They're small, medium and large, I think. And I ended up putting them on the page 
by my flowers. Not on my flower. One I think is on my flowers. I don't know why I'm getting into such detail. They're only drops, like dew drops. I didn't want anything wet to go on there. So here I had to get my um, foam. And I get this foam at Walmart because Walmart carries, you know, a 100 of them in a package with the tape already on the back. And all you have to do is run it through your Xyron machine, that glorious, glorious Xyron machine. But I didn't have time because of the week that I had. I, I didn't want to get it out. I just wanted to get it up, get this video up on YouTube. And this morning I woke up early and I'm giving it another go to do the voiceover because I had a hard time for two days trying to even do the voiceover. I don't know what was happening. But uh, yeah, it wasn't anything that you would um, lose sleep over. Uh, because sleep is precious to uh, me. I'm older and, uh, you know, I, I'm always watching the videos at nighttime to watch everybody else uh, create so many wonderful, talented people on YouTube, isn't there? Uh, and then when I do that, I feel so inadequate. <laughs> so I think, oh man, look how creative these people are. Oh, yes, I have a lot of work to do, right? And uh, it's all a learning process. And anyway, so I moved away from my Final Cut Pro X. I started over with my SD card in my camcorder. I decided to get up and get this tutorial up. Whether I make any mistakes with it, I, I'm just leaving it in. And uh, we're going to have a wonderful day together. My tutorials are always over an hour now. I don't know what that is, but if I, you know, they're hours long because I take a long time to make a card here. I'm taking it off. I had to straighten it up there. Um, I, I don't, yeah, I had to, I want to seat it on my white card base. And once, yeah, don't stick that down. I'm trying to figure out what the best way to get it so that the top and the bottom is perfect. I was having a little issue, yes, with that. And uh, look at that. I get it. Then you press it down. It gives you a nice lift with the foam. The embedded emboss is gorgeous. If you saw this in real life, I'm serious. It is one of those cards that, to me, I can do uh, interactive cards. Uh, you know, I not that they're the best. I can do them, and, and I enjoy them, and I love detail cards, and I love experimenting with different interactive cards. But this simplicity of an embedded emboss and the colors of flowers puts a smile on your face. I wish I had the time to do at least a dozen of these to send out because they're so pretty. And I had somebody ask me, uh, they saw a tutorial way back when, when I did those color charts that uh, for the zig markers, and I had to apologize. They wanted me to make it for them. I've had a few people ask me to make them, but they took me hours and hours and hours, and I don't have that kind of time to do things like that as much as I'd love to help people out and do that. Um, I don't have the time. You know, we have a home-based business. My husband, I answer the phones, I do the bookkeeping, and I have a large, a large house that I keep up and uh, I try to. And then I have, uh, I want to spend time creating. And uh, Little Darling Rubber Stamps has a blog coming up. May I mention that? I have to start those over again. And then my layouts are in June. So I will put that all up on my blog. But this was just a fun, into my stash. I wanted to use stash products. And look at, I'm using my Pix, is this called the Pix Stick? I have the other one that I put orthodontic wax on the end because it was never sticky. I'm putting down the dots, uh, glue dots, the Stampin' Up glue dots. And then I'm putting on the um, Honeybee uh, jewels, the clear crystals there. I'm going to set them with my jewel picker. And the jewel picker, they're, they're not expensive. I was really shocked. I was at Sharon Store Buffalo Stamp and stuff, and I saw it there. And I'm trying not to buy things I already have. And I know you're going to laugh because I have, what, five die, four die cutting machines I just got the beautiful, I haven't even used my Gemini. I'm afraid to touch anything because so much has gone wrong. I don't want to try it yet. But I have the Big Shot Plus and the Vagabond and the Stampin' Up! Black one in case I my one friend shows up. <laughs> 
I always joke about that. And, anywho, and I'm trying to work on my husband to do a voiceover for me. I've been watching videos like that, tutorials, and my husband is the funniest person alive. He makes me laugh 24-7. He is so crazy funny. He can come up with those quick things, you know, but I don't know. He tries to stay out of my craft room and um, as much as possible. I don't think he, he appreciates the goodness up here as much as I do. The same as I stay out of the uh, garage where all his tools are. I don't have an interest to go down in there. And uh, yeah, so we're, we'll see. We'll see what I can do there. Uh, I'd have to make it a 10 minute tutorial. So there's no way he'd sit here and talk through an hour and four minutes or whatever. So anyway, this is what I did for the inside. I did do the inside of the card. Yoo-hoo! So I took my, this is called Prit, P-R-I-T-T. -T. If you're in a stationery store, it's crazy sticky. I wasn't taking any chances, but wow, I couldn't believe how sticky. Uh, and then this morning when I got up around 6.30, I had to change my ATG guns. I have two quarter inch ones and then a half inch one. Well, if you want to lose your mind first thing in the morning, change the tape in your ATG gun. Mm -hmm. It'll help set your day. Yes. So uh, I got them changed because I, I use, I'm going to use them on my layout because when I watch tutorials, that's what everybody did. And here's another dollar store product. Okay. So this was good. It's like a blush brush and it has this foam thing, like that other nail thing. I'm using these gorgeous, gorgeous LDR uh, inks. Oh, they're so vivid and pretty. And they're hybrid inks, which I love because if you want to use embossing powder, you can do that. So I took out the colors that were in the um, pattern in the front. But I wasn't having a heyday here. Like, this was not looking good. Yes. I thought, wow. You know when they talk about a hot mess? I thought, Carol, what on earth? If you put your makeup on like that, you wouldn't be going outside for days. <laughs> this is a mess. I, it's okay. You can say that. Like, what am I going to do with this? But then it hit me. Uh, these LDR hybrid inks, if you don't have hybrid inks made by Little Darling Rubber Stamps, you are missing out here. I uh, have my swatches here. So I'm looking through my swatches to see if there's any other color that will help me with the process. And um, I'm glad I do make swatches uh, because this is, you just set it up to where you're doing things and then you look, okay, will that help? Will that help? And I thought, Carol, nothing's going to help. Just put that album away and move on. So I went to Spellbinder dies. There was a sale on these years, a couple years ago, where they had, I think it was 70% off. And I kid you not, I bought everyone that was on the sellout. It was crazy. I could go to Spellbinders and pretty well pick out any dies that were recent up to a year and a half ago, I think. That's when the sale was. And I knew I had to go with black. And isn't this a beautiful, beautiful um, die? Oh, these Spellbinder dies. I, I made a commitment that I'm going to use them more um, because now that I am designing for LDRS, Angie's dies are out of this world. They are top-notch dies. They are coated with Teflon. They're beautiful, and I'm going to show you that in the blog hop next week. I'm doing three cards, three days. I'm not necessarily do cards. I don't know yet what projects I'm going to do. Probably cards. Um, what I meant was I don't know if I'm going to do one or two on the same day. And uh, you're going to love the new release. I'm just so thrilled. And then I grabbed this tape because the first time I've seen a tape runner so crazy sticky. Look at me. No chances here, yes, because I don't like change, and I'm changing to a glue runner. And uh, like I said, the only glue runner that I like, I have to stop the tutorial for one second because I have to get it to tell you. It's my number one tape runner. I'm back. It's Tombow Extreme. It's red. It looks like that, but it's really, really sticky. I would trust that. But the one that I used, uh, it wasn't this one that I used on the black, but it was another one. My whole card base fell off. Excuse me. So, um, 
Yeah, isn't this pretty? This is a pretty Spellbinders uh, set. I'll put it in the, on my blog. And if you go to my blog right after you watch this tutorial, nothing's going to be there because um, I have to put it on all the social media and then I go back and uh, work on my blog and put everything in. So generally, if you go back around 45 minutes after you watch the tutorial, all my information will be up. Okay, so now I put a little pearl on each one of the corners. I want to keep it simple and isn't that pretty? But then I have to add some white to it. Just the black like that, it needs something else. So I took the same embossing folder here. I put it over to the right because I'm going to cut out a circle, as you could, an oval, excuse me. And I wanted to use a lot of that one side on the oval. So I ran it through my Big Shot, or probably, yeah, my bag, Big Shot Plus. I have it on a cart so that it's always for just doing um, embossing folders. And then my Vagabond is just for die cutting. And then I'm going to start using my um, Gemini because it's a, uh, for a, bit, a lot of dies. That's my, I'm sticking to that. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> it's my reasoning. So here I ran it through and I'm going to show you why I offset the paper inside the embossing folder. And that was to get the flowers running down in a half uh, formation. And this has the dots on it too, by the way. You know, the little dots on the a die cut. So I'm just going to put it back and move forward. And I really love that it's black and white, just like we did the front. You know, the front is, there you go, you have the white embossing powder. And I'm back here. Then I get out these beautiful, let me just say, Elizabeth, is it Elizabeth Craft? I'll have it in the, on my blog. These stickers are the most delicate, gorgeous stickers you're ever going to get. And I was cleaning out a unit that I had, and I buy a lot of good stickers, like really pretty stickers. And I found this one with all of these ladies on it. It was, look at it, with the hats, kind of like the, um, I don't know, the 40 style. I thought it was beautiful. I'll use that. But these poppies, it's Elizabeth Craft Designs, exactly, 2632, I think that says. And these poppies, you can either use the inside or the outside fine line or put everything together. And tell me that's not beautiful. Oh, I'm so happy. I got these at uh, Sharon's. Yeah, she doesn't have an online store. She's over in Buffalo, uh, in my other country. <laughs> I'm Canadian, so as you all know. But my new subscribers may not know that. And here you have to work with thirds, right? So I put this other different style bloom, and then it has separate stems, which is wonderful. Oh, this set. This is one of the hoarding sets. I had it in my hoard. You know where you don't see it because if you see it, you use it. Yes, that's where I had these. And that just made it. You have those flowers going down the right side. And now you have these delicate poppies. I call them poppies. I don't know. Pansies, maybe. Could be a pansy. Well, my friends, we're almost getting down there to the end. I don't apologize for my long tutorials anymore because somebody once said to me, yes, I'm trying to see, um, show somebody that I was talking to on FaceTime there uh, how you couldn't hear this runner. Some runners, you know, they go, yeah, oh no, I'm going to stick a flower on it. I was just going to say it will stick down anything. And that's that print red permanent. Uh, if you see those at your stationery store, it's very sticky. Uh, I don't know if it's comparable to the Tombow Extreme, but it's extremely sticky. So now I am going to raise it. I, I'm not sure. Yes, I do raise it up because these Scotch squares, uh, you know, I sound repetitious when I say, but uh, we have a business and I buy our office supplies at our stationery, stationery store. And I always look to see what they have new. I'm going to show you some organizational things I picked up 
that will really help you to organize if you are on design teams and you want to have separate uh, um, things. Now, I did that. I showed you. Oh, that's terrible. A fat bow on top of a fat bow. Yes, it had to come off. But I saw that that ribbon matched that one particular flower as well as that uh, deep purple. But I took it off, yes. So I had to find a dot for there, and I ended up using, um, it's a Stampin' Up! metal dot, I think. Or it's a shiny dot. It's gray, I remember that, yes. Um, but that's what I put on top of the purple violet bow. Look at those stickers. Oh! It would be beautiful if you bought one in white and one in black, and you interchanged the patterns in those girls, wouldn't it? Yeah, and then I did my stamp I got at my stationery store that just stamps down like boop. And I have there created especially for you by Carol Held. And tell me this doesn't look beautiful to have this fine line flower at the back. Snip off the bottom stem. These are my new scissors. Did I mention my new scissors? Oh, I have another tutorial to do. I, I bought another Ross cart and at Michael's. They had them on sale. And they... They had these new scissors. It said they were new. Um, you know, I guess everything says new, but they're Fiskars. And you only use your thumb to uh, work them. They're called mixed media scissors. Look at, I'm showing you a close up of that beautiful folder. And now I don't mind the outside being all colorful like that with the inks because they match. And there's created especially for you by Carol Held. That's who I am. Puffing up my little flower. Yep, there's my shiny uh, glue dot in gray. Little pearls on the edges. I really like the inside of this. I like the whole card. It makes me, brings me joy. I love it. You don't want to make anything that doesn't bring you joy, right? And flowers, oh yeah, they bring you joy. Well, my friends, we're coming down to the end. If you stuck with me, thank you very much. Thank you for enduring my crazy stories, and f I hope you took away some inspiration. These Elizabeth Craft stickers, you will love them. They're only $2.50 a package over in the States. I get them at Sharon's store, Buffalo Stamp and stuff. And I loved using my Perfect Pearls, getting some ribbon out of your stash, doing this embedded emboss. It's actually, that is embossed into an embossing folder with the 110 pound black cardstock. Loved using my polychromo crayons, pencil crayons. And um, yeah, my husband calls them when he's talking to somebody, because my, my wife has at least 4,000 crayons. Do you know anybody that needs 4,000 crayons? <laughs> I'm with them, so he's not, you know, he's just trying to be funny, and I think it's funny. So there you go, look at that. I love the cord and it's not stretchy cord with that deep blue with the beautiful purple. Then you open it up and it's flowers again. And I got to use some stash stuff. Yes, we have to use some stash stuff. Please join me next week uh, for uh, blog hop for Little Darling Rubber Stamps. And over on Chica Designs, I'm going to do two layouts, the first of June and the middle of June. And you have yourself a blessed week. Thank you for subscribing. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much. Your comments are wonderful. And I love that you put the little thumbs up. So subscribe, press the bell so you know when I'm going to be coming on with a tutorial. And take care, my friends. 